In part A of the question, we are told that the particle Q2 has a positive charge on it. So we have indicated that positive sign right there for the charge Q2. We've also drawn the rest of the configuration based on the given information. One thing we will need is the distance from Q1 to Q3, as well as the distance from Q2 to Q3, although we can see that those distances will be the same. So in other words, we're gonna need this distance right here. We're gonna call it R. We could use the Pythagorean theorem. We can say that R squared was equal to three squared plus four squared. And then we have R squared is equal to 25. And then of course, R will equal five. So we can actually come in here and label this distance now as being five millimeters. And that will be the same distance over here between Q2 and Q3. So that would be your first step just to get a fully labeled diagram. The next step is to draw in the forces that are acting on the charge Q3. So let's consider the force between Q1 and Q3. Both of these charges are positive, so there would be a repulsive force acting on Q3. And so basically Q1 is pushing Q3 in this direction here. And we can call that force perhaps F13, just to symbolize the fact that Q1 is exerting a repulsive force on Q3. Now we look at the force that Q2 is exerting on Q3, and again, in part A, Q2 is positively charged, so it too will exert a repulsive force on Q3 in this direction right here. And we can call that force F23, symbolizing the force that charge two exerts on charge three. So that would be the completion of drawing in those two forces acting on Q3. The next thing we would wanna do here perhaps is draw in the components of those forces. So let's consider the force labeled F23 and we're gonna draw in the X and the Y components. And so for the X component, it would be projecting in the positive X direction this way. We might call that F23X just for now. And then the Y component would be projecting upward in the positive Y direction. We can label that component F23Y. And then we can see that there is an angle between F23 and the X axis. We might want to call that angle theta. Now, similar components can be drawn for the F13 force. So we would have, maybe we'll change colors here. We'll have an F13 X component going that way. It's gonna get a little cluttered here, but we'll manage. And then we'll have an Y component pointing downward here. This can be F13Y. Now, it's important perhaps for us to notice something special about these two Y components right here. Now, we'll notice that the distance from Q1 to Q3 is the same as the distance from Q2 to Q3. They're both five millimeters. We'll also notice that Q1 and Q2 are going to both have a charge of 80 nanocoulombs. And so since the charges Q1 and Q2 are the same, and since the distance from each charge to Q3 is the same, that means that the forces, the F23, and the F13 are going to have the same magnitude. And therefore, their Y components, one of which points upward, the other of which points downward, are going to cancel. So these Y components will indeed cancel out, leaving us only to worry about the X components. So it becomes our job to find the two X components, add them together, and that's going to be the answer to part A of this question. Perhaps we can even erase the Y components, again, because they cancel out. We don't need to look at them right now. So the task is to find the X components. Hopefully we can understand too that the X components are going to be the same as well, because again, F23 and F13 have the same magnitude, and this sort of angle here is going to be the same. So that angle right there will be the same as that angle right there. And so let's try to find the X component. It will be useful to get an expression for the X components. Let's consider a sort of right triangle that we can draw right about there. Remember the X component is this F23X. We can maybe shift it 
right there. Looking at that triangle, we might say that the cosine of that angle is equal to the adjacent side, which would be the F23, divided by, or F23X, excuse me. That's the adjacent side of that triangle over the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is just this force in green right here. That's the F23 force. Now it turns out we can get a useful expression for the cosine of theta. We can use this theta here, which is identical to the theta in our triangle. And so if we look at this triangle right here, we can see that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side of that triangle, which is four millimeters, divided by the hypotenuse of that larger triangle, which is five millimeters. The millimeters would cancel, so basically the cosine of theta is four fifths. And this will be useful to us. Let's go back then to this equation right here. We now know that the cosine of theta is four fifths, so we can plug that in. And again, what we want to do is figure out an expression for the x component. And this will be pretty easy right now. We can just multiply both sides of this equation by F23. These F23s will cancel out. And so we can now see that the x component of F23, if we kind of rewrite it here, F23x is going to equal 4 fifths multiplied by F23. Now we can do better than this because F23 is, again, the force between Q2 and Q3. That force is dictated by Coulomb's law that we learned in this chapter. So we're going to go in here and we're going to use Coulomb's law for F23. Now remember, Coulomb's law takes a constant, multiplies it by the magnitude of the first charge, multiplies that by the magnitude of the second charge, and then divides that by the distance between the charges squared. Now, remember here, we know all these values. We can actually go ahead and find the x component by simply plugging in those values. Now, k is a constant. It takes on a value of 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. We will omit units right now for clarity. q2 would be the charge on particle 2, which for part a is positive 80 nanocoulombs. Now be careful here because nanocoulombs needs to be converted into coulombs and you do that by multiplying the 80 by 10 to the negative nine. So that would get that into coulombs now. Q3 has a charge of 18 nanocoulombs. So we're gonna do 18 times 10 to the minus nine. And then we're going to divide this by the distance between them squared. Now, the distance between charges 2 and 3 was the 5 millimeters. That's millimeters, so make sure you multiply the 5 by 10 to the minus 3. That will convert that into meters. And then don't forget also to square that distance. So that's a pretty hefty calculation. But if you punch that into your calculator, you should end up with 0.414 approximately. And that's going to come out in newtons. So that's the x component of the F23 force. Recall that F13, this pink vector right here, has an x component equal to F23. So without doing all of the math, we can simply say that F13 x component will also take on a value of about 0.414 newtons. And therefore, to get the net force acting on Q3, we simply add these two X components together. So we're gonna have 0.414 Newtons plus another 0.414 Newtons. And because they want it in unit vector notation, and because these are X components, we can just tack on a little I hat here. I hat, you recall, symbolizes the X direction. So we end up with about 0.828 newtons and that will be in the i hat direction there is no y component recall so we don't have to write anything i mean if you wanted to you could say plus zero newtons j hat j hat symbolizing the y direction but really this is the best answer right there that's it for part a let's set up part b
Now for part B, the main difference is that Q2 is now negatively charged, so that when we go to draw in the force that Q2 is exerting on Q3, instead of it being a repulsive force, this time it will be attractive. So we can draw a force pointing this way. This is basically Q2 pulling on Q3 towards itself. This can be labeled F23. So that is an attractive force. The force that Q1 exerts on Q3 is still repulsive. They are still both positively charged. So we can draw that force going out this way and label that F13. And then as before, we need to consider the components of these forces. If we look at F23, we would see that there is a Y component going this way. And we can call that F23Y. And there's a component going that way, that is the X component, that will be F23X. We can draw the components for F13. Similarly, there's a Y component pointing downward, that's F13Y. And then there's an X component that points to the right, and that's gonna be F13X. Now, here's another secret to solving this question. Q1 and Q2 have the same magnitude. They're both magnitude 80 nanocoulombs. And then the distance to Q3 is the same for each of them. They're both five millimeters. And so what this means is that the X and Y components are going to be identical in magnitude. And if you look at the X components, they point in opposite directions and therefore they will indeed cancel. So let's knock out the X components and we only need to concern ourselves with the Y components. So to find the Y component of let's say F23, we can make a little triangle here, a little right triangle just like this. And let's see, why don't we mark an angle? We can mark this angle here, we'll call that theta. And from that right triangle, which is a little bit messy, but we can say that the cosine of that angle will equal the adjacent side. Hopefully from that yellow triangle, you can see the adjacent side is the F23Y divided by the hypotenuse, which is just F23. Now we got to find an expression for the cosine of that angle, just like we did before. And it might be useful for us to sort of expand our triangle like this. We know that this distance was the four millimeters this over here is three millimeters, and then the hypotenuse is five millimeters. So right now we're looking at this larger triangle here. And so from that larger triangle, we can hopefully see that the cosine of theta is the adjacent side, which is the three millimeters, divided by the hypotenuse, which is five millimeters, like that. Now we're gonna solve this for the Y component. We'll just multiply both sides of the equation by F23. And we're gonna pull this up make some room. So now we have, these cancel, F23Y component is basically equal to 3 fifths times F23. And just like before, we're going to substitute in an expression here for F23 using Coulomb's law. So this would be the constant K times Q2, we can use the capital letters, times Q3 divided by the distance between them squared. Now we'll just punch in some known values to get this Y component for F23. K we know is the 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Q2 was, now it was negative 80 nanocoulombs, but remember we're just doing magnitude right now. These should have little absolute values on them. So you can still use positive 80. And then for nanocoulombs, don't forget to multiply by 10 to the minus nine. And then for Q3, it was 18 nanocoulombs, so multiply that by 10 to the minus 9. And then divided by the distance between them squared, which was the 5 millimeters. Don't forget to multiply the 5 by 10 to the minus 3 to get it into meters, and then don't forget to square it. Let's go ahead and punch this into the calculator. And when you do that, you get the Y component of F23. It's equal to approximately 0 0.3107, something like that. That'll be in newtons. Now let's not forget that the Y component for F13 was the same. So we also know that F13 Y component is the same value. So to get the net force, we're gonna add them together. Now if you add those together, you get about 0.621. This is in Newtons. But let's be careful. Look at the direction of the Y components. As messy as this picture is, the Y components are both pointing downward. 
So the truth is when we added these, we should have put little negative signs on these guys because they're both pointing downward. Therefore, this should have a negative sign on it. And to complete the unit vector notation, this will be j hat, which symbolizes the y direction. So this would be the correct answer to part b. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But if not, no problem. I appreciate you still taking the time to watch regardless.